Okay, uh, 11.52 on a Friday, it's not Friday, it's Thursday morning. Uh, it's Thursday the 30th of June. That means June is finished in about seven minutes, in theory. In front of me, I have an absolute genius. There we go. Now, you're wondering, okay, so we're going to put this up on the uh, Facebook Live and also we'll put the video up later on as well for you to have a look at. And you'll think... <laughs> Well, she doesn't look like much of a genius, but she's a genius, yeah, in her own way. Cut it, Alex. Hello. Should I call you Alex or do I call you Alexander? Call me Alex, call me Alex. Yeah. Let's keep it casual, let's keep can it smooth, keep, let's keep, keep it chill. Chill. Yeah. Okay, we'll keep it chill. Okay, so, uh, yesterday morning, Nev gets an email on his computer, but I don't look at my computer very often. Um, but then I got a visit from a certain Carlos Gomez, good morning Carlos, who said, I sent you an email, rah, 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 this is this. And I read this email and I thought, and she's coming in tomorrow, and I haven't read anything about it at all. So Alex, tell us, how did you meet this Carlos? And uh, it's such a story to this, it's unreal. Good morning. Good morning. Well, the magnificent Mr. Carlos and myself met each other because I was living and working with Father Grant from the local Minster. Big up to Father Grant this morning. <laughs> Hello if you're listening. Um, yeah, I was staying and working in his garage, fiddling about the wires. Carlos was a mutual friend of ours. He basically met in a garden, having some pins. He's just a super cool guy. We started talking, he was on radio, and then I was, I had just done this NASA thing. And he invited me to come and speak a little bit about it. That's fantastic. And I'm so excited about it because obviously we know about the Tim Peak uh, being in space now for what was it? Months on end, it seems. And uh, he's back. And then all of a sudden, something lands on my desk with an N-A-S-A -S -A on it. And I'm thinking, hot. Give it to me. So anyway, I mean, before we get into this, what happened? I mean, you were at school. What did you do at school? I mean, gosh. I did art history at university, mm -hmm. so absolutely nothing to do with what I'm doing now. A uh, complete paradigm shift of everything I was doing. Decided to give up the art world, decided to give all of that up, uh, decided to come stay, leave London behind, basically fiddle about with wires and do some coding in my friend's garage for a while and come up with new ideas. Explain, this thing, explain this thing called coding, because a lot of people don't get it, do they? What is that? Um, a lot of a lot, like, words, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of words, <laughs> a, a lot of numbers, a lot of dark spaces, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of just staring blindly into a screen for a while and just furiously tapping and hoping that after you tap enough, something eventually works. Is that how the magic works medically, do you think, as well? Because uh, I always find things that are a bit electronic. Um, you know, you shouldn't touch that really because you're going to get an electric shock. Do you know what I mean? You should so you don't touch white live wires just like certain people don't touch blood. So how does it how is it that you manage to tumble into this little world by just tapping wires and dark spaces? A uh, total accident. I mean I wanted to apply some of the new skills I've been teaching myself, uh, just for fun, for the hell of it, because I was just getting more and more interested in technology and the potentials that had and moving more away from fine art. And it transpired that there was this NASA hackathon that was going on. So I thought, well, why not? Um, this huge thing that I was massively intimidated by, to be honest. And I thought, you know, what could I possibly bring to the table? You know, so I just started watching a lot of videos and thought, okay, what problems are astronauts currently encountering in space? How can I fix these? So I came up with what I thought was a really silly idea of a CO2 monitor that goes around your ear. Um, and we later developed it to be able to read blood oxygen levels and your heart rate as well. Um, that can give constant unobtrusive feedback and monitoring of astronauts and also help them out when they encounter uh, pockets of CO2 and aircrafts, which is a huge issue <laughs> to be on and do it another time. Um, yeah, and I thought it was a totally ridiculous concept. I mean, it was based, you remember ear cuffs? I they really uh, years ago. I was obsessed with ear cuffs. <laughs> I love ear cuffs. I still wear them. I think they're great. Uh, but I noticed that like, I never noticed that I was wearing them. Uh, and I suddenly, suddenly realised that, oh, we don't actually have that many nerve endings around the ear. So why not rethink how we're dealing with monitoring systems right now? And why don't we have a crack? Uh, applying them to a completely different part of the body that's been overlooked so far. That is just amazing. 
So you just you just did this one day because you thought, actually, you know what? I've got this going on, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to try this and see if it works. Oh, and it worked. Yeah. Lord, Lord knows how. So yeah. How, some how some wizardry get, in there. I was going to say, so uh, the funding for this, how, how do you get funding for this? Or how do you get money? I mean, God, nothing's for nothing. Well, well, I have to say, we're a tech startup now. So this was a... Uh, I said this was a huge global competition, but mm. we're the first team to come out of it who are now setting up a company around it. So right now we are in negotiations with investors, we've just found a lab space in Guildford. So with our current schedule we should have version what we've dubbed 0 0.9 by October, which means it's, it's more than blueprints, it's a functioning version of it, but you know, we, you're not going to risk putting that in a hospital basically mm. right mm. now, yeah. and astronauts are just not going to touch it whilst it's large, obtrusive, messy, but hey, if it works, it will work. If it's one of those things which gets, will it get too big for you to handle and then somebody comes along and goes, Alex, we want this idea, and they offer you oh, massive amounts of money to take it off them, uh, or to, for them to take it away from you, would you do that? I don't know, Dev, I've never encountered anything that's too big for me to handle <laughs> yet. <laughs> <Wait. laughs> Uh, yeah, so it, it, it is one of those things that, that that could actually just get too big for you to handle and all of a sudden become multinational and, it, and obviously NASA, one of the biggest organisations in the world, I mean, will we, we'll, we'll probably lose you from our shores, you'll end up in America or Russia or somewhere. My heart belongs in Great Yarmouth. Seriously? It does, and, and London as well. Oh, okay, yeah. Back, back and forth. There's, lot, there's, <laughs> lots, there's lots of that going on this morning, lots of people are tumbling in and out of uh, Yarmouth. How did you... Uh, how did you even end up here? I mean, gosh, this is like, um, it's like having uh, a couple of the brightest people in the world right here in Great Yarmouth. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, two of my closest friends uh, started living here because, you know, my friend who's a priest, it was his first ever station here, so he's living in the church, his fiance, Curtis Lloyd, uh, an absolutely phenomenally talented fashion photographer. And they were two of my good friends from London, we used to live together there. And, um, yeah, I kind of asked at some point, you know, actually, is it okay if I kind of mill about and work in your garage for a bit, because I just want to leave London behind. And I want to be in a quieter zone, but that's still really vibrant. You know, the arcades are great, by the way. I, I wasted at least an hour, two hours a day, every day on the arcades. That Jurassic Park game by the pier. <laughs> oh my god, the Jurassic Park game. No, unbeatable. You need, High to, score. you need to throw that away. <laughs> So, uh, a qu I just had a question just come through and says, like, d uh, does Alex want to be in his space man stroke woman? Oh, yes. Even beyond that, I feel if anyone is aware of SpaceX, look into it. They're literally about to start colonizing Mars with the first space shuttle going out there in 2018 with the first uh, manned mission, I think, scheduled for 2020 or 2025 right now. So we're in this really exciting zone where we're not just going into space anymore, we're going to orbit. Uh, the potential for us to become an interplanetary species is really real right now. So we are at a super exciting point in human history. You know, imagine this is kind of the equivalent of um, people setting sail in the Elizabethan era and just discovering America, thinking that was India. This really is like the new frontier. Science fiction is really becoming reality on a on an increasingly daily basis, thanks to these teams of just phenomenal geniuses who are so passionate um, about creating something scientifically that's so beyond what we can imagine, like so beyond the everyday. If you say, I mean, I, I couldn't have, I could have really imagined wanting to get into space, I would think that's, that's a universe and that's a different place where we wouldn't want to go, I, I wouldn't want to go there, I wouldn't. I don't mind travelling the earth, uh, looking around and seeing different places, but to go into space is quite, um, it's quite a daunting fact. But you just talk about it like if it's... And normally, I suppose I'm kind of like putting you in the world of scientists, aren't I? Because you could be a bit of a scientist now, couldn't you? It is starting to look that way a bit. Uh, you're only yeah. 23 and I don't want to be prejudiced or anything, but you're only 23. What's that about? I mean, gosh, we can't fail to acknowledge the fact that, you know, you're tall. Uh, you've probably done a bit of modelling, which is, um, you know, and you could have been doing anything else except dabbling with the sciences of the world. What's that about? 
I know you you gotta follow what you love in life, you know, decept appearances can be deceptive. Yeah, but you went to university to do something different. Now you yeah. to, <laughs> so you were following your path then, so you completely tripped yourself up and come back and doing something completely different. Uh, it, was, it, was a, it was an organic path at the same time, because you know, I was getting so much of science fiction and the art of science fiction, you know, just look at like Stanley Kubrick Kubrick films, you know. Um, there's such an overlap between art science fiction and that eventually waters down into actual science and technology you need to have that spark of imagination there for scientists to have something to work on this far towards so i see from another angle how this seems like a completely different field to go into but for me it's it feels like a very organic process of uh, following these interests to the to their natural conclusions and whatever projects may arise from those i like it okay we're gonna have a piece of music when we come back we're going to be talking um, the difference between actually playing spaceman, being spaceman uh, in games, because I think that like you're you were just like, alluded to it. You're a bit of a gamer, aren't you? I'm sure. I'm going to go away with that line. There's nothing too big I can't handle. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you. Ten past twelve, and I'm still joined by Alex, who is just throwing me, and we've just been having a discussion off air in regards to uh, things which have, have touched us in the last seven days or so. Uh, we're not going to go into it, but we know how it works. What next uh, for Alexandra Moss? What happens? Well, now we're, we're Canaria Limited. Now we're not just Team Canaria, so we're a proper company. Just got registered. Mm -hmm. um, just got U.S. patent pending status on the invention. What, what does that mean in layman's terms? Um, that means that we own the technology and no one else can steal it from us in the U.S. Good. and replicate it, mm -hmm. uh, which is so 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 important with any kind of invention. And it's something that's really easy to overlook when you get really caught up in the excitement of inventing something new. Uh, but you have to go through this messy legal stuff and you've just got to protect yourself and your own inventions. Um, I mean, frankly, financially, it's really important. I mean, I think it's worse to become really successful, make like 10 million pounds or something, and then you realise you forgot to get the patent mm. and you have no ownership and then you get sued and you lose everything. It's, it's a lot of stuff which is going on here, which is quite um, elevating to me because what you're saying is, and again, I don't mean to serve the prejudice of you being extremely young, and, but you are. And that's what excites me about the fact that, you know, you, you seem so focused and, and directive about the things that, and the way where you're going. Uh, it's quite scary, considering that we, the majority of the time we're told, <laughs> young didn't know anything. You know, you have to wait till you're about 103 years old before you are where you are. Um, so what kind of like spun you round into being so kind of like emotive and driven if you like um you came up with an idea and you're carrying on with this idea which is now registered it's patented it's yours and you know you're going to be you're not going to even bother to want to come and talk to people like me in about maybe two to five years time i've always got time for you now i'll write you. that down <laughs> i'll get that in print yeah so what is that about why is it so why are you so driven how come I, I know, I always started down to passion. I mean, you have to find the thing that you love doing and just find a way of being able to work on that as much as possible. I mean, if you love what you're doing, you never have to work a day in your life, you know? Um, there's also an added motivation that's altruistic with something like this, because there was this realisation halfway through the design process that this was suddenly no longer a thing. We were designing for a contest for astronauts to wear in space, which is cool, you know, it's a very cool thing to do. But we suddenly realised that this could actually have a life-changing effect on people. This is something that could potentially replace um, abrasive hospital monitoring systems. This is something that's designed for people living and working in hostile environments. So this is the kind of thing we want to see people in mining industries, in heavy industries, you know, smelting, um, working in toxic environments. This, with that huge realisation that this is actually something that could save lives. Mm. Um, and that really lights a fire in your belly and makes you work harder than anything else because you're no longer just working for yourself, for your passions, you know, your own creative aspects. You're tapping into something that could genuinely make a difference. And I think there is nothing that drives you more, is more inspiring than that. 
and it's it's really lucky and really special to have kind of stumbled onto a project with those kind of implications. Brilliant. And what happens? Um, in, okay, let's say five years time from now, what do you? How do you see the picture being painted? Is it? Are you are you going to be here? Are you going to be whisked off somewhere? Are you going to be stolen? I'm worried. See, because I just think like I just get so passionate. It's like meeting you, falling in love with you, and then you leave. Like one of those 18th century things, you know, she's gone away. And Henrik, gonna... my love, he's gone to war. Come back, Henrik, come back. Is, that, is this going to be you? Is this what's going to happen to you? No, 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 I'll be floating around a lot. If all things go well, you know, this will be a really international thing. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of jetting around, negotiating, testing. Uh, just doing all the stuff that you need to do to make something like this happen. Uh, well, I very much foresee UK base, I think. I mean, five years is a long way away. Uh, we want to see this work, we want to see we want to see it make a difference, we want to see it make a difference on a global scale. Mm. Um, but also personally, I have a vested interest in medical device design and prosthetics, you know. Uh, nothing in, I just I just love the idea, that, I don't know if anyone who's this thing has ever been into anime or cowboy bebop. I know, There's a character, like Jet, who had this, this is just this phenomenal cyborg with a cyborg arm. I mean, I want to see stuff like that become a reality. I think something that's so important to focus on is finding the things that you feel negative about or appear to be setbacks and making that into your greatest strength. So, you know, so what? You've lost your arm. You now have an amazing robot arm yeah. that can crush yours. <laughs> that's so much better. I would take that option any day. Take the option any day. Do you know what? We could talk about this for absolutely hours, but we're not going to. Uh, look, listen, promote it, promote it. The Facebook okay. site, where can we find you? Look up Canary on Facebook, mm -hmm. give our page a like, you'll be seeing a lot of digital content from us over the next few months, over the year until we get to market with this. Uh, we have a YouTube channel, Canary Limited. So right now the easiest way, go onto YouTube, Google Canary Monitor, check out our video, uh, which really sums up everything uh, better than I can right now through, because I'm getting, I'm simply getting so distracted by our marvellous conversations now. It's, it's really hard to focus right It's now. hard to focus with conversation, but it, see, I'm trying to focus, I'm just still completely spun by the fact that um, there are plenty of things that you could have done, which could have been a simpler route. But I suppose you answered that when you said to me, if you find something that you love, you don't ever have to work another day in your life. And obviously you love this so much, do you know what I mean? And it's going to be, you've got your whole life ahead of you. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, I'm just so jealous. I just wish I was you. Well, the rest of my life, uh, assuming I don't get lost in space at some point. No, you won't get lost in space. It's going to be a string tagging you between, between Earth and here. Listen, you can come back in and talk about this any time you want to. I think it's absolutely fabulous. I'm just so fascinated by it. I've just... See, this is the thing, right? Right now I'd say, Alex, just hang around a minute, we'll just talk about it over coffee. We could talk about it all day. Black like coffee. But now I'm on this rubbish diet where I can't have even a cut. I can't have caffeine, I can't have anything. That's no fun. How are you gonna feel jittery and nervous now? It ain't gonna happen. Ah, what a shame. I just have to do what I have to do, and that's it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. This has been the most fascinating interview I've ever done. And I need to do more interviews like this. We'll get you back in and we'll have a chat and see if we can top up some more. Make English of it for people. Because a lot of people are thinking, she's just a space person. She's just a medical person. She's just a person. And you haven't used any big words which is going to trip people up. But it's very interesting. We'll get you back in. Thank you. Thank you very okay, much. Now, this is the thing. Um, I always kind of throw you at the last minute. Give me a song. I'll see if it's in my system, okay? A song that you really love and you want to hear at the moment. You know what? Go on. Robbie Williams, Swing Supreme. Let's have it. Let's see if it's in my system. And if it is, you can have it. If not, I'm going to make sure. Oh, hang on, there's Robbie Williams. <laughs> Oh, 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 Millennium, something Robbie. I'm going through a Robbie phase right now. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, we could do that for you. Thank you very much.